All the rage was making your own bread, all different types. Sourdough was, seemed to be the favorite. And that's still the thing now that we're in our second lockdown, but we're doing something different this morning. Something called DIYP, do-it-yourself pasta. And we're turning to Chef Erica Guidi, <laughs> Glenn Catering, to help us, please help us to the kitchen. Let me show um, you. How hard is it to make your own pasta? It is not hard, it's not hard at all. And so I love that this is something that we're gonna talk to people about today because literally anyone can do it. And the other thing I love about pasta is it is a really, really fun activity for kids. Yeah, okay. I do DIY we, pasta we with need, kids all the time. We need something to do right? with Right, activities for kids. Yeah, yeah, it's textile and it also helps them, I find when they make it, they eat it. So if you've got picky kids, Make them make their own pasta, they're gonna eat it. What is in here? Let's have a little chat. Okay, so in this bowl, we have half a cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup plus two tablespoons of durum wheat semolina, and then we have a teaspoon of salt. I happen to have pink Himalayan, so that's what's in here. Any salt will do. Um, let me show you how to make this, yeah? Let's do it. Okay, so yeah. super simple. So yeah. what you are going to do, whether you're doing this yourself or you're getting your kids, Mixing the first thing is mix the flours. Yeah, we wanna make sure that they're incorporated and that the salt is incorporated as well. I mean, I'm Italian. I've been doing this since I was five years old. So, like, can you just use flour? Does, all purpose does it, flour. Does it matter the type of flour? 100%. If all you have is all purpose flour, then go ahead and use the all purpose flour. The durum wheat semolina is going to give it more bite and hardiness. Okay. We're going to do a stuffed pasta today, so super important. Right. Okay, you have your little pile. Now, what you're going to do is make a well. So, you're going to use your fingers and just open up the center of the dough. Okay, to this, we're gonna add two eggs. So, eggs are right there. You grab two, I'm gonna grab two as well. If you are concerned about getting eggshell in your pasta, crack it in a bowl first. You also, oh, I'm gonna show you something. You wanna always crack on a flat surface. Ah. You're not watching my Don't F It Up videos. <laughs> I see what's happening here. Okay, always crack well, an egg on a it. flat surface. Flat surface. It'll stop the uh, shell from like sharding and you getting all of those little pieces inside. So right on the flat surface, right? Whoa! Look at you! Boom. Okay. okay. You're gonna take your fork. Yep. You're going to start by whisking the eggs as though you were going to scramble these, okay? So oh, we have wanna, a breach! Oh, we have yeah. a breach! Build up that wall, build up that wall. So once you see that the eggs and the whites are incorporated, okay? Meaning that like you don't see a division, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start using your fork in this sort of like round motion, and you're gonna start incorporating the flour into the dough. Once I like see that it's starting, I sort of take my fork to the outside edges a little start bit. Start working that flour. Yeah, out. it's gonna your your whole little circle is gonna get a little bit bigger. Your well is gonna get a little shallower, and you're just working the dough in. Yeah, perfect. That looks great, Tim. Okay. And what you can do too is just use your opposite hand and like okay. push the flour in a little bit. At this stage in the game, it's not gonna go everywhere. So we just need to incorporate all of the flour into the dough. Love it. So take okay. your fork and start bringing it start in from the sides. Yeah. We want to get it to the point where we can start working it with our hands. Okay? So like for me, I can see that there's still a lot of wet dough. I'm going to use my fork and just sort of push it down a little bit. To get that all that To get coverage. it all incorporated. And then once it gets to the point where you know it's not going to like be a huge mess on your hands, you can take your finger, scoop all of the dough off the fork, and like, let's get in here let's with our in. hands, okay. yeah. And we're using, we're at a commercial kitchen, we're at the Kitchen Collective here in Hamilton, and this is yeah. where you work out of, and that's this why we're is. using, that's why we're using gloves, right? Yeah, but In I mean, your home, you, you kind of want that connection to the dough. You want right? to, you want to feel it, you want to feel the hydration and what's happening. I mean, gloves are great because they're easy cleanup, and if you've got kids that are like, oh, I don't want to get my hands dirty. Right, because it can be a little do. bit. It can, yeah, for sure. So once you have all of the dough mixed in, or all of the flour mixed in, I should say, you're getting there, you're getting there. Yeah, flip it over. There you go, push okay. it down. I'm not sure why Luke is only on me. He should be looking at the expert. Not <laughs> yeah, so basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna incorporate all of the flour into the dough. And okay. once that happens, yeah, it's looking good, Tim. Okay. You know that it's time to start kneading. Oh, and there's, to knead, there's kneading. Oh, to knead, goodness. you're just gonna do this. So around, around, around. You're pushing, you're incorporating everything. If it gets really wet like this, you're just gonna add a little bit more flour. Okay. Yours looks great. Um, can I show you? Yes, you okay, do that. Okay, so this is the kneading. That's kneading. Once you knead this for like five minutes, you're good to go. You're gonna put it in a little piece of saran wrap. You're gonna wrap it up and you're gonna let it sit for about half an hour so that the, um, the flowers can absorb all of the moisture and the gluten can start to relax. Okay, let's take a break. Yeah. Uh, we'll come back with Chef Erica, Blend Catering. And by the end of the show today, we are going to create a, what's the dish? Uh, it is a stuffed butternut squash and, and homemade ricotta stuffed ravioli. Oh yeah.
There's a lot of extras. Yeah. yeah DIYP, baby. <laughs> Do it yourself pasta. Good <laughs> morning, live. Good morning, and welcome back to Kitchen Collective, where we are making the homemade pasta. Yeah. At the master. From Blaine Catering. Chef Erica. Okay, <laughs> this thing is. This is how I'm used to like this, this the yeah. one sitting on the side of the yeah, table, right? Too. Like the manual. Yeah, I've been okay. hand cranking for 30 years of my life. Um, but this is a nice little shortcut. If you happen to have a KitchenAid mixer with the attachment, this makes your life very, very easy. Okay. Um, though you can use a hand one, or you can also just use a rolling pin to roll out your pasta dough. No big deal. Or, yeah. or a wine bottle. Traditional, traditional huh? rolling pin. Wine bottles I've used so many times. It so just many takes times. a lot longer. Right? It does. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's going to be more difficult when you're doing a dough like this with the Durham wheat semolina because it's a, it's a it has more bite to it, so it's a, a slightly like stiffer dough to work with. Okay. But, Ty so, type of pasta that we're making is a stuffed pasta. We're okay. going to make a ravioli. So we're going. This is not elementary stuff. We're going to advance right away. For somebody that just yeah. wanted to do, let's say, linguine, you're here, it, right? You're here, right away. Yeah, just like this. All you would do is sort of like roll this up. So we usually do halves, halves again, and then you would cut your linguine, your fettuccine, your spaghetti, your angel you hair. Just cut it like you that. just cut okay. right through. Yep, yeah, with nice, a nice amount of flour. I want you to make the stuffing. Okay, so. Okay, so we are going to stuff this pasta with roasted butternut squash. Okay, so put that in there. Put that in. Okay. We are to that going to add some of my homemade ricotta. You homemade, this I is homemade? I homemade, yeah. Now, here's the thing. This is probably easy too, isn't it? It's easy enough to do. I feel like there's another <laughs> segment on making cheese, but I've put it in cheesecloth because we want to strain off all the additional you liquid. Want we want this as dry as possible. Okay. Uh, about half of that, Parmesan cheese. Okay. To that, we are going to add egg last because we egg need last. to. Get, well, technically, we need to give it a taste. So, like a pinch of nutmeg. Nutmeg okay. en enhances the flavor. Okay. You're going to microplane a clove of garlic, and then you are also going to microplane half of the, like the zest of half of a lemon. It's really important that we like, there you go, perfect. It's really important that we keep this balanced. So we're adding like, there's a lot of cheese and, and fat and beautiful flavors. The nutmeg is gonna add a certain je ne sais quoi. The um, lemon is going to allow the acidity and then as always, a pinch of salt. And then I'm mixing this with yes, my hand. Yes, with the spoon with right the spoon. beside you. This one here? Perfect. Okay. So we're gonna mix to incorporate. That's all we're doing with this guy. That's and then we advance it because of the magic of TV. What you have in your hand right there. I That's happen it. to have the filling already That's here. The yeah. Mix. Okay. And so I put this in a piping bag just to make my life a little bit easier. But you can do this in uh, like just with a spoon. And then to make ravioli, what we're going to do is we're just going to pipe on our little mounds. Oh, we Not might get it. Yeah, we might get one on the end. And then I like to uh, use a little bit of water, which apparently... We need some water? Yeah, just to seal it. So you just dip your finger in. Again, really fun for kids. So you dip your finger in. You're going to like do the mounds. And then we're going to dress it. We're going to add the top to it. You need the bottom and the top. Okay. So this is the bottom, then the top these, next. Do you have these recipes? Are these recipes that you post somewhere? Or where can people find more information? Well, I don't have these recipes written, I don't okay. think. We usually used to do these in our hands-on cooking classes, okay. but we've done a transition to virtual, so the classes look a little bit different now. Okay. Yeah. Your Instagram is? At Chef Erica Guidi. Uh, at Chef Erica Guidi. Yeah. And then um, we're going to put that top on. We're going to take a break. Yeah. We'll cut that up. We'll blanch it. And we're getting closer We're getting closer. To we're getting our, closer. Our finished product. Yeah, so we're throw that there. on there. All right. And then we'll... Uh, so I can see there. that it's not going to fit to that last one. So we want to make sure that we get a good seal. You also need to make sure that you don't get any air pockets. So watch the way that I'm using my fingers to push around the filling, making sure that there's no air inside of there. Okay. Really yeah. important. Erica Guidi on Morning Life. Our DIYP do-it-yourself pasta is coming along very nicely. Back okay. here at Kitchen Collective with Chef Erica from Blended catering. Okay. I did Look how two. Cute those are. I did two. It's your turn. Okay, so, just so you're gonna press it down, and you're gonna give it a little twist just to make sure that it's not attached. There you go. And then move on to the next one. Okay. If somebody at home doesn't have this attachment. Yeah, I mean, like you can use these are cookie cutters, right. so like pretty common for people to have these. You can use a lid of like a cup or something yep. as long as it's sharp. Um, there's also like cool stamped ones. I brought this one back from uh, Florence when I was in Italy. So if you want to do like a square, you can do a square. I love these little rounds. What I do want to talk about very quickly is the fact that when you make like round-shaped pasta, stuffed pasta, you do end up with a little bit of like what would be considered waste or scraps. 
And I just want you to know that you don't need to waste this. So while it would be very tough for you to like re-roll this, you can just cut it into pieces and then use this inside of your homemade chicken noodle soup or like whatever soup you're making. Now you've got these cute little noodles, right? Okay. No waste. I was thinking that's perfect for the kids to be doing too. Totally right? perfect for the kids, yeah. So Come once, back, we have it, yeah, once we have it made, right. then it's time to, uh, to give it a blanch, so. Because even though it's homemade pasta, you still have to boil it. You still have to boil it, you still have to blanch it. Yeah, you have to get it cooked. First and most important thing is to make sure that that water tastes like the sea. There needs to be a lot of salt in it. It's going to absorb into the pasta. Do you want to go ahead and throw like three tablespoons? Yeah, three chunks of butter three into this butter. pan. Okay. Perfect. The water is boiling, so I'm going to go ahead and drop our beautiful butternut squash and ricotta stuffed ravioli in here. You just don't need to boil it as long as you would dry pasta. No, exactly. This is going to, so because it's stuffed, we're going to wait until this one floats. Once it floats, we know that it's good to go. What about regular um, pasta? Regular pasta, you have to do like that taste test. So you want to cook it until it's like just before al dente, so it has some bite to it. And then you're gonna finish it inside the pan. It's really important. You want the pasta to absorb all of the sauce. In this case, we're gonna do a little bit of a brown butter. So you can see that they are starting to float like very quickly. I want the milk solids to cook out of this butter so that it has that really, really gorgeous nutty taste. So we're gonna wait. You can see it's like foaming. It's getting exactly where we want it to be to this. We're going to add our sage because we're going to do some fried sage to finish this off. So we're going to like fry it up in the butter first. Then we're going to toss the noodles in it. And then we're going to toss a couple more things. We've got okay, some so roasted delicata squash. Doing there? Yeah, they're coming along. We're going to wait until they all float. And then once they get to that point, we're going to strain them off with a, um, a spoon that's got holes in it or slots, a slotted spoon. You need something like that. You don't want to be because they are still delicate. Right, They're so like delicate. going in there with like a tong or something like that could disrupt. We also, in this case, because we're going to go into brown butter, we don't want a ton of pasta water. But if you were doing like a tomato sauce, even a cream sauce, having a little bit of the pasta water, which has the gluten cooked into it, is actually going to help to bring your sauce together. Oh, look at that that foam is what we're looking for. So Tim, you want to throw the sage inside there? Yeah, all See that, that color? Okay. Oh, it's going to, yeah, we want it okay. to like, just the moisture is going to cook out of that, and then we're going to throw this pasta right in. Let's do that. Let's take a break. Okay. When we come back, we'll finish this up and put the finishing touches and do the plating. Beautiful. Of our homemade pasta with Chef Erica Blend Catering on Morning Live. Okay, we're putting our finishing touches on our homemade pasta dish here with Chef Erica Blend Catering. Yeah, so we've got that beautiful sage that has fried up. The brown butter is gorgeous. You can see those little bits of nuttiness all over the pasta. And then I roasted some delicata squash. This is a beautiful squash. You can eat the skin right on it. So it's a really, really lovely way to plate this Is that the same dish. squash that's actually in there for the filling? No, it's a different squash. Butternut squash is what's in the filling. And strictly because it's, it's a heartier squash, you get so much meat out of the top of the butternut squash. Okay. While you could totally use this, it's just a little bit more labor intensive to get the flesh out of it. You can see there's not as much flesh. Can, can you overcook the pasta? 100% you could, yeah. Okay. We just want to take the pasta from the boiling water and toss it in the butter so the butter starts to soak in. This is done. This okay, is ready let's, to go. Let's, let's play. Yeah, let's bring it over and plate it up. Because, um, too, like there's that al dente thing, right? With you want it al dente? Yeah, you, yeah, absolutely. Pasta should still have bites. You should like be able to bite into this. It's not mush, right? So if you overcook it, it's going to be super mushy and gross. And that's just Look not desirable. Beautiful little things. Oh yeah, are they pretty? Right? Now, like, there's absolutely no need to fan them out like this. I don't even, I don't usually do this. I don't know why I apparently was feeling creative and wanted to fan them. Um, but what you do want to make sure that you get is some of that beautiful fried sage on there. Because it's going to taste delicious. It's a really natural marriage, too. Like the fried sage with the brown butter and the yeah. squash. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you doing right now? Good. As far as like, I know it's, a, it's obviously crazy for everybody, but everybody yeah. in your industry is. Yeah, the industry has definitely, it's, you know, it's, we've been hit really hard um, and uh, people have to adapt. And yeah. so we pivoted the last time I was with you. We, I was doing the Gourmet Take Home program. Yep. So once, um, once summer sort of hit and I was able to help out my brides again, I transitioned and started helping them. And what it's allowed me to do now is take my, my hands-on cooking classes virtual. So now I'm offering those, which is great. I really miss teaching. Is it kind of similar to what we did this morning? 
like stepping people yeah, through totally. that whole step, right? Yeah, it's so step by step. What happens with the cooking classes is you uh, you can get the whole entire meal kit. So you get all of the ingredients. They're for two people, which is awesome. So like great for date night yeah. in. Um, you get a cocktail recipe or a wine pairing suggestion. You get a Spotify playlist. All of my classes from now until March are travel themed. So like last week we went to France. Next week we're going to Mexico. Uh, we, we are going to Italy oh, yeah, for okay. Valentine's Day. Yeah, I think it's the 17th. So we're not going to do this pasta, but we're going to do another pasta and uh, chicken parm, I think. Yeah, so yeah, they're fun. You get to do them inside, which means I don't have to worry. You can drink as much as you want, yeah. and be merry and jolly, and sit down and enjoy a meal okay, after. That looks absolutely It's nice. pretty, oh, right? Just, I would love for you to try this, yeah. but we're going to stay safe. Okay. And uh, off camera, you can give Great it a go. Great seeing you again. Of course, as always. Hopefully you at home learned uh, a little something for your DIYP, do yourself. Do it yourself pasta yeah. at home with Chef Erica. <laughs>